Hey guys, quick update on how the solar thermal is heating the garage. Well, it's 46 degrees out right now, up from 30 last night, and this thing is heating the garage nicely. I got a whole series on how I built the solar thermal system for heating the garage. Now, I put the final touches right around Christmas, and so this year, January and February 2018, I haven't needed to run any active heating. The solar thermal has been doing it all on its own. So I'd say that's a success, although it hasn't quite been as warm uh, during <laughs> inside the garage as I wanted. Uh, but it has kept it above freezing, and I need, haven't needed any, any active heating. So let's check out how it's working. So the water uh, pumps into those two panels, comes out of the top, over, up, and then through the top five. So they're in series with each other. Let's go inside and see how they're doing. Today, it feels great in the garage. It is 61 degrees in the garage. Uh, but yesterday was also a sunny day, so this is the second sunny day in a row, which means the second day of lots of BTUs being pumped in here. Now, uh, let's go through the system. There's the pump. Uh, it's a brass pump because the solar system is open to the oxygen, and it's pumping out to the bottom of those panels. And then it comes back through this line. So let's see what the water's coming in at. Well, we got 123 degrees. That's great. Now this is the cold water from the floor, and it's at 72, and then coming out of all the heat exchangers at 105. This is pumping 10 watts at two gallons per minute. This is going through the radiant floor, through the concrete, and through the heat exchangers. Now this guy, I don't have a flow meter on it, however, with the, uh, I've checked the graph from the manufacturer for that little brass pump, and at the head that I'm pumping, that should be moving at five gallons per minute. Let's take a look inside this tank. All right. If I come down inside the tank, The cold water from the radiant floor comes up through this manifold, goes into the bottom of this tank. I could turn these electric elements on. I haven't needed to do that since December last year. Uh, the circuit breaker's off. It comes out expansion tank through this Grunfoss Alpha pump. We're holding good pressure. This is where the temperature sensor is that connects with the controller. This then goes through the heat exchangers these three copper coil heat exchanges are in parallel and then it joins back up to this manifold goes to the bottom of this a bit complicated air vent back down to this manifold and down to the radiant floor now i built this over the course of two years this whole garage and and the solar system and i would definitely change a couple of things if i had to do this all over again knowing what i know now <laughs> I would just have built this tank in the bottom. I would not have purchased this stainless steel heat exchanger. And instead I would have just bought a single three quarter inch copper pipe uh, coil, 60 foot coil and coiled it up inside this. Bottom line, would I do it again? Yes, I would. I mean, the system's running. It's keeping the garage above freezing and when it's 10 degrees outside, it's really nice to come into a 40 degree gr garage. However, I wish it was 60 and I could do a couple of things, uh, in improvements in the future to hopefully get that up. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm glad I did it. Now, it's not worth doing this if you gotta pay retail for those panels. If you gotta pay $1,000 per flat plate collector, you're not getting enough BTUs to really justify it. However, in my situation, I got those panels for free. I have a video on that, uh, but they all needed some repair. So if you, uh, want to watch that video, I'll link to it in the description below, but otherwise, um, don't pay retail for the panels. If you can DIY it, great. I'm glad I did it. I would do it again. Uh, and if you, have, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you like the video, please share it. Thanks a lot for watching.